Hello, it is Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so hopefully, hopefully a fairly easy puzzle. I think most seemed to agree that yesterday was slightly tough for a Monday puzzle, so we'll see if maybe Tuesday is a little easier to balance that out. This edition of the Daily Solve is brought to you by Alex, Bradley Pirtle, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. And as a funny note, I saw Bradley Pirtle's name in a um, the video by Three Blue One Brown, who um, did this uh, information theory analysis to determine the optimal Wordle answer, which I used in one of my Wordle videos a week or so ago. And I just have I was seeing the list of patrons of that person's presumably Patreon or something like that scrolling by, and I realized I recognize that name. For my Patreon. So anyway, Bradley Pirtle, a benefactor of of um, interesting YouTube videos, the site over. So anyway, thank you to to all three of them, Alex Bradley Pirtle and uh, Hood Monster, for um, supporting the Daily Solve Patreon campaign as benefactors. And if you'd like to join their ranks and get that Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, as well as this recognition, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. But thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon at any level. And for that, you can get access to all of the bonus video solves that have gone up there over the months, as well as the extra channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Of course, the Discord chat server is free beyond that for anybody to join. So uh, look into that as well. Links to all of this, of course, in the description field underneath the video. But for now, let's solve the Tuesday puzzle. And I've actually just noticed that we've got circled cell here, circled cells here as well. We had circled cells yesterday, and we have them again today, so it must be my lucky week. This was a crossword constructed by Jacob McDermott, who's constructed a few New York Times crosswords, not a great number, um, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, shall we find out what's going on with these circled cells? I think we should. Let's get started. Okay. Waiting room fair in brief mags, maybe magazines in a doctor's waiting room that would sort of stereotypically have, I think, often out-of-date magazines. Um, Very on a music score could be molto, very, from the Italian. And you blank beautiful. Is it you are so beautiful? Is that you are so beautiful to me? Is that what that is? Anyway, it seems like what the answer probably is. American Gothic artist. Oh, right. This is that famous painting. Who, Who is this? Uh, I'm not going to bring it to mind. Let's hope we get some, get it with some crosses. Yankees manager whose teams never missed the postseason. All right. Shockingly, I think I do know this name. Is it Joe Torre? I think that is, I think that is the famous Yankees manager. So every once in a blue moon, I'm aware of something sports related. The weekend's almost here. Yay. That would be TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And to gather as information is to glean it. Uncool, man. Could be it's not okay. And as usual, when the clue is in quotation marks like this and is itself a verbal statement or an exclamation, the answer generally will be as well. So it's not okay matches uncool, man. I I mean, we'll see. It may may or may not be correct. Um, A title for Eva Perón, Senora, I suppose, in this context. Senora Perón, and well-trodden as a path. Um, hmm, is this wrong? What is this? Oh, right, American Gothic artist. What is that? I can't remember. An explosion maker could be TNT. And what about this? Horses bit. Horses bit. It's funny because a bit is what the horse bites down on when the horse is champing at the bit, for instance. So what is this alluding to? Horse's bit. I'm not sure. Um, Let's look around. I wonder if there's some sort of, maybe there's a rebus going on. That would be surprising for a Tuesday, wouldn't it? DC Media Giant, for short. DC Media Giant, for short. The Washington Post, perhaps? WAPO? For short. And TV's The Good Wife. 
Um, that I have seen quite a great deal of, actually, with Juliana Margulies. And sign on a vintage application at a flea market, maybe. Um, I don't know. I'm really doubting it's not okay. Although it's interesting because TNT and WAPO both work. Let's just, I'll remove it for now, even though it does seem like the most likely. It's not on, you could say, although that's more British in tone. I don't know. Two's counterpart, to and fro. Nightmare Street would be Elm. Nightmare on Elm Street is the horror film franchise. And championing could be promoting. And I skipped over this circled cell because I still don't know what's going on here. I find that often when there's a um, some kind of theme element that's evident to me, it will undermine my ordinary thought process and I'll start imagining all kinds of outrageous things that could, that could fit there. And it might even distract me from a more simple fill. Near the North or South Pole, say... Air? That wouldn't be two eyes in a row, would it? There must be something going on here. Okay, to squirrel something away would be to stash it. And... Communicated through channels. So oh, it's got a circle in there. I'm going to skip the circled ones for now. Like Thor or Loki. Um... Those are Norse gods, like Thor or Loki. Uh, it's probably very obvious. I don't know what I'm missing there. B and B's, bed and breakfast, could be inns. The brink of or the edge. We're on the brink. We're on the edge. And Michelle. Oh, here's another sports thing. I think I know. Michelle, we west of the LPGA. I didn't know the west part. Is that did she get married or something? Is that a new name? I'm. I don't think I've seen that name referenced before, or it's a different person, coincidentally, seems unlikely. Oddity. Whims. Uh, doesn't, oh, that doesn't look right. This H doesn't make any sense. Oh, at world's end. Near the North or South Pole, say, at world's end. Ah, so two. Ah, there is a rebus. Look at that. A rebus on a Tuesday puzzle. Wow. On a Tuesday puzzle. <laughs> At world's end. Okay. Interesting. So are these other ones going to spell out numbers as well? And then sign on a vintage appliance at a flea market, maybe. Oh, it works. No wonder I didn't jump straight to that. Um, well trodden as a path. Oh, so foot worn. Oh, it's another two. Okay. I thought maybe we would be spelling different numbers, but maybe they're all twos. Foot worn path. And so the title for Eva Perone is indeed Senora. Oops, senora. And it's not okay is probably correct. So oh, maybe I don't remember this person's name. American Gothic artist Grant Wood. Horse's bit. Oh, I see. A bit of food for a horse, an oat. There, fair enough. And quid pro quo is the Latin phrase here. We had a Latin phrase yesterday as well, didn't we? Uh, Grant Wood. Okay. I didn't remember that artist's name. So fair enough. I thought I'd get it with some crosses, but I didn't. I didn't until the very end. Uh, last Chinese Dynasty, 1644 to 1912. And Lyft competitor. Oh, the rideshare company. So Lyft competitor. Um, uh, Uber, right. Yes, sorry. It took me a moment. Son of, in Arabic names, would be Ibn. Oh, is this the Qing Dynasty? Q-I-N-G, that actually sounds, that sounds right to me. Let's check the crosses on that. After tax, yes. After tax would be net. So your net earnings after tax. And um, what about this? Beowulf's first com combatant. Is it uh, Grindel, the monster he uh, chops off his arm? I don't think this is easier than yesterday's puzzle. I think this is also a little bit tricky for a Tuesday, maybe. What parallel lines never do... Oh, Grendel. Sorry, not Grendel. Grendel. What parallel lines never do is intersect... Foster professional connections would be to network, and that is much less baffling than it would have been before I understood what this theme was. Here, well, let's go. We'll, but now that it seems like these are all twos, we can go and fill in all the twos, right? It's what everyone always wants, so let's do it. All right, what does that mean here? Lead in to be happy. Don't worry, be happy. That did make that much easier. And what about this one? Communicated through channels. 
Um, I don't know. Maybe this isn't Stash. What is this? Ghiberti, Sculptor of Florence's Gates of Paradise. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think this is easy for a Tuesday. Bake as eggs. All right, this is a slightly obscure word, I would say. To sure eggs. To, um, I think it's sort of low temperature for a longer period of time. Sort of a gentle heat. Um, sleepless in Seattle. And there's also a fabric, I think, sure. Anyway, Sleepless in Seattle director Efron would be Nora Efron, of course. And, oh, communicated through channels is sent word. Right, okay, so squirrel away. Is that? What is that? Oh, oh, what is this? Oh, it should be Norse. What on earth did I put in there? Why did I put N-A-M-S-E? What did I think that was? How did I ever put that in there? What? So I had stash, I had the A here. Where did this M come from? Oddity. Oh, that was when I was trying out whimsical or something like that. And I, I forgot to, to remove that. That was terrible. Wow. Okay. Anyway, Thor, and, Thor or Loki are Norse. So why did I not think that could be Norse? It must've been because I'd already put stash for squirrel away. Anyway, squirrel away must be store. So really that, that shows you, you shouldn't just assume things. You should really be confident before you put them in. And if you're not confident, you should do the thing I never, ever, ever do, which is um, switch to the pencil tool. It's off screen, so you can't see me clicking on it, but there is a pencil tool. So I could have typed in oops, store in pencil, and that would have reminded me. I'm not really certain about that. There are other words that could mean mean the same thing, and I don't have enough crosses to know yet that it is stash, which it wasn't. Anyway. Okay, so what about this? To skip over is to elide. You could elide well, you could elide a concept, you could sort of elide a fact, or you could elide um, a bit of a word to sort of skip over it a bit. Um, calendar column, or a punny hint to the circled squares. Interesting. A weekday, or no, tu oh, Tuesday, right, of course, sorry. Tuesday, which is today. It is Tuesday, and Tuesday is the central answer in our grid. And I suppose today is Tuesday. <laughs> and um, isn't Tuesday named after a Norse god? I don't remember. Is this Lorenzo Ghiberti, sculptor of Florence's Gates of Paradise, perhaps? Shade of Black. I don't know. Oddity. Weird. Uh, I'm not sure. German article. It could be Ein for a... Uh, the indefinite article, so a thing, ein thing. -er. I don't know what thing is in German. I have no idea. Um, so maybe an oddity is a weirdness. That that works, actually. And pasta that's often baked is baked ziti. It's, um, it's a round pasta, and baked ziti is a dish that's sort of like uh, lasagna, but with a different pasta type. Shade of black. Oh, onyx. Okay, so that was Lorenzo, after all. Onyx black, of course. And pen that's full of oink would be a sty. So we have the, I haven't seen many of these this puzzle, but the question mark is a pun or wordplay indicator. And here we're referring to a pig's pen, a pen that's full of oink rather than a pen that's full of ink. Shortcut to highlighting the address bar on most internet browsers. Oh, is it F6? I didn't know that. And it is. I just pressed F6 and it highlighted my address bar. I had no idea. That's interesting, useful fact, perhaps, that we've learned from the New York Times crossword. So... This is a practical pastime. Finally, home of the Texas Motor Speedway with seating for more than 150,000 spectators. Um, is it, oh, is it Fort Worth? So I, I really, to be honest, I really only am aware of the city of Fort Worth because it is the site of the airport at Dallas-Fort Worth, which is um, presumably named as such because it's in Fort Worth or near Fort Worth, but also serves the Dallas metro area. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a city in Texas. And I suppose it's also home of the Texas Motor Speedway. So in the past could be ago, five years ago, five years in the past. Lawyers organization could be the American Bar Association. And a screw-off car part could be a gas cap. If one enters unannounced within, it could be barges in. So the it's within is saying that 
barges doesn't mean entered unannounced. You have to add in for barges to mean entered uh, enters unannounced. So barges in is what creates that. Um, and here we have vice encouraged by capitalism. It could be greed, famously embodied by that uh, Gordon Gecko character from the 1980s, greed is good. These in Spanish could be estos or estas. And let's just check the crosses. I shouldn't fill that in yet. Third degrees for short, PhDs. That makes sense. So you have your, you could get a bachelor's degree, then you could get a master's degree, and then you could finally get a uh, doctorate of philosophy, I suppose, a PhD. First string, your first stringers are your A team. So here we have these in Spanish, it's feminine, estas. And the birth birthplace of Zeus in myth must be Crete. And part of a flower or watch would be the stem. What is the stem of a watch? Is that the, um, is that what connects the crown, the winding crown to the, the mechanism, the movement? I'm not actually sure. Uh, bad, but better than the alternatives. Could be the least worst. And lead into while could be erstwhile. So sometimes when you see this lead in, it just um, it just means a word, or not a word, but a, a, well, sometimes it could be a word. But usually it means a prefix that, that you could prepend to whatever the word is in question. So while could be preceded by erstwhile to make the word erstwhile. Or could be preceded by Erst. Anyway, cafeteria trays on snowy days, perhaps. Cafeteria trays on snowy days, perhaps. What does that mean? Are they empty because it's a snow day and children aren't at school? I'm not sure what that means. Patron of the Met, say. Some kind of donor. So this could be the Metropolitan Opera. There are quite a few things that are called the Met, such as the Metropolitan Police Force here in London, um, the Met, the Museum of Art in New York, the Metropolitan Opera also in New York. I mean, there are many things in New York actually called the Met. Um, but I'm guessing it's either the museum or the opera. Anyway, I'm wondering if it's some kind of donor, D-O-N-O-R. Chatterbox's gift, oh, I guess not. Uh, chatterboxes have the gift of gab, someone who's eloquent and good at speaking off the cuff extemporaneously. Earth deposit. Well, it could be ore. Or, so does it mean a deposit in the earth or a deposit of earth, so of soil? I'm actually not sure. What about this? Best in show. This looks like the film, the Christopher Guest film, the mockumentary. A great, great film. Earth deposit. Maybe it is ore. Where ships are outfitted, dockyards, straightforward enough. And, oh, caf I see, cafeteria trays on snowy days, perhaps. They're used as improvised sleds, perhaps. That's why the perhaps is there. Uh, you might do this. Oh, and a patron of the Met would be an opera goer. So not a patron as in a benefactor, but a patron as someone who attends the opera. So I was right, it is the opera. But in this case, it's simply an opera goer, not a major donor. Writer Pico with the uh, 2021 novel, Wish You Were Here. This is the author, Jody Pico. And a bad result for a QB, a quarterback. This must be an interception. So look at this. Look at this. I'm getting sports clues left and right. Well, if you're well-informed about something, you're up on it. And I'm, spe I'm speechless. Just, just wow, you might say. And a water channel that rises and falls would be a tideway. It rises and falls with the tides, of course. And here we have Reese's pieces, the, the confection. And Bobby of the Black Panthers would be Bobby Seal. And buying channel on TV, is this HST? No. HSN? Home sh oh, Home Shopping Network. It must be HSN, Home Shopping Network, I suspect. And let's just, but let's just check the crosses. Quelques uh, a few in French, looks right to me. Sort of someone's, like you know, some, some things, a few. Uh, and like much three stages humor is inane and that crosses with HSN. So that does confirm HSN. And there it is. There is the Tuesday puzzle. Oh, look at that. I didn't even think to question why the, oh, oh, wow. I didn't even think to question why the twos were um, in this pattern, but it's because they are illustrating a connect the dots image 
of the number two. So we've, we have an extremely two themed puzzle today. It's Tuesday full of twos and the twos illustrate the actual character, the number two. And I think that was, uh, I think that's it. It was just sort of a fun, you could say it was a bit of a weirdness, a bit of an oddity, a sort of whimsical theme. Uh, but look at that. Very nice. And it's always fun when they add that, this into the, the website. So it draws this image. That is, that is a fun thing. Um, and I do think, honestly, I do think this was sort of similar to yesterday's puzzle in that may, maybe actually slightly, slightly less challenging maybe than yesterday's Monday puzzle. Perhaps you let me know if how you feel about that. But, um, so it's hard to really determine that with any kind of great confidence. But but I do think this was still a little bit tricky. And any day with a rebus, um, I mean, I, I'm always itching to put a rebus into the grid, although I didn't catch on to it as quickly today as I might have. Um, but some some people certainly, especially almost every video, I've noticed almost every video I post that includes a crossword with a rebus, there's always at least one person in the comments who said, well, how are you supposed to know you can put more than one letter into the grid, which is a great reminder that every, you know, probably most New York Times crosswords are somebody's first crossword, or at least first New York Times crossword. And so there really isn't any reason to assume, obviously, that most people are aware you can do something like this, put three letters in a cell. Uh, it isn't self-evident. I don't remember how I learned that. It must have just been by doing enough of these that I, I mean, I can't remember it would have been years and years and years ago that I first put a rebus into a grid. So, but I'm sure the first time I encountered it, I was utterly baffled. And um, that does make this, I can't remember how often a Tuesday would have a rebus. I would suspect not all too often, not all too often. Um, but yes, let me know, let me know how you did with this puzzle. And let me know if you, if this was your first exposure to a rebus. I'm sure it was somebody's. Um, so that was today's puzzle by Jacob McDermott. Now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And actually on the topic of yesterday's puzzle, um, more broadly, there was something quite central to the puzzle that I missed entirely. And this was pointed out by uh, Noah Shore, as well as Kathleen Quinn, uh, who, who both observed that the theme was president centered yesterday because it was President's Day in the U.S. <laughs> as Noah Shore explains, America celebrates President's Day on the third Monday in February, as it is close to both George Washington's February 22nd and Abraham Lincoln's February 12th birthdays. So yes, indeed. Uh, and I think, the, strangely, I think the holiday might actually officially, in sort of in a legal sense, be Washington's birthday, but it became President's Day to include Abraham Lincoln as well. Uh, anyway, I'm certainly aware of President's Day, um, but because I don't live in the U.S., I just, it, you know, it isn't sort of in the air um, here in the U.K., so I just, it didn't even occur to me that it was President's Day, and I missed, I missed that entirely. So that, that might, that may explain why it was a slightly more difficult Monday than usual, because the theme, the president's, you know, someone, the constructor made the crossword in order to achieve that theme, and they constructed the crossword however they constructed it, and it just turned out it ended up being more difficult, but it had to run on a Monday in order to match the President's Day. So that's probably what happened there. And that is often a reason that some days of the week will be um, slightly out, slightly tuned differently to their ordinary uh, difficulty uh, setting, I suppose. That's the kind of thing that happens. It's often because a theme thematically should run on a particular day. Okay, what else do we have? Kathy Swope says, happy hour starts at five because it's the end of the nine to five workday, admittedly an out of date concept. The term happy hour actually derived from American naval slang in the 1920s after the first world war. Happy hours were actually periods of time on naval ships where sailors could engage in relaxing activities in order, in order to relieve themselves from the drudgery of life at sea. That is very interesting. I have no idea. And speaking, Harry S. Harry S. Truman, who was part of that uh, President's Day theme yesterday, on that topic, Zio R95 says, "My favorite Harry S. Truman fact is that the S doesn't stand for anything. It was his parents' way of honoring both his grandfathers, Anderson Ship Truman and Solomon Young." 
I think I'd heard that before, but I didn't know the I didn't know the names of the the grandfathers. So thank you, ZOR95. And uh, finally, oh Matt Road points out, you know, it's funny. I sort of <laughs> I sensed something was going on here, but I didn't think to to investigate it, and I should have because Matt Road point Matt Rhodes points out as a note, this wasn't a square grid. Instead of the normal 15 by 15 grid, this Monday puzzle was 16 by 15, which added to its more than a Monday feel. Yes, I sort of thought there was something that felt slightly off about the grid yesterday, and I just didn't I didn't focus on it or think about it. Um, but it must have needed to be that big in order to um, fit the particular theme answers, which again, I think is often something that happens with puzzles that are aiming for a very specific theme, is they have to mess with the grid a little bit in order to accommodate it. So all sorts of unusual things about yesterday's puzzle. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed today's puzzle and the illustration that resulted. Let me know how you fared. And please do subscribe to the channel if you've if you've been enjoying this. Um, and tell someone. Why not? Pass it along if you think you know someone who might enjoy these videos. Uh, you never know. And it is the only way, really, I have to spread the word about the channel. So it's greatly appreciated. Um, those uh, those of you who've done that, I do very much appreciate it. And of course, again, thank you to everybody who has supported the Patreon campaign to help make this series a sustainable part of my daily work. Very much appreciate that as well. Uh, everybody who's done so at any point. And I think that's it. So I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle. We'll have to see. Is that going to be more difficult than both Monday and Tuesday this week? Who knows? Maybe it'll be about the same. Um, the only way to find out, to come back, solve the puzzle, and watch the video. I hope you do all of those things. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.